Franco. Il mio ragazzo. Francesca, finalmente stai a casa. Ma papà... Oh, Mrs. Lawrence, it's Essie. Oh, I'm fine, thanks. Is Tony there? In Sydney. No, I didn't know. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yes, I've been out a lot lately. Perhaps he missed me. No, 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 it's, it's not important. Give my regards to the family. Bye-bye. There's a little nephew, huh? Hey? <laughs> That's a Lauren smile. So what's it like? What? Having children. Oh, it's great. You sure you're old enough? Tony. <laughs> so where's the boy? Oh, he's outside. Uh, I'll see you in a minute. Oh, sure. Tony, you old bastard, what are you doing here? How's it going, mate? It ain't raining. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, how's Melbourne? Ah, oh, you know, no different. We read about the march in the papers. <laughs> if those long-haired creeps put as much time and energy... You're just not used to it. I'm not sure I want to get used to it. What would happen if the whole thing was for nothing? Frank, we did our duty. We did the best we damn well could. I mean, talking about being right or wrong, that's for those bloody barrackers on the hill. No one said it was going to be easy, Frank. Is that why you haven't been to see Essie? Where's that old tub of yours, huh? The boat's gone. The old man sold it. He figured he was doing me a favour. Out of sight, out of mind. I don't think I'll ever walk again, Tone. No, they don't say anything. But it's in their eyes. Even Viv's. I suppose these things take time. Oh, oh, do they? Thank you, mate. Jesus, you're just a bloody saint. Poor Frank, he's done Frank. his dash. Gonna spend the rest of his life at a Frank, wheelchair, eh? that is not and what that's I why meant. You're here instead of in Melbourne with it's Essie where you I belong. Meant. Tone, one month, mate, one month. And I'm gonna be out of this contraption. Getting around under my own bloody steam. I just don't need any more of their poor old Frank crap. I've had it up to here. Another pillow. No, no, thank you. Frank, I'm sorry. I just thought. I'm tired. It's been a long day. It was good of your brother to give us his room. Tony thinks we should spend some time at the farm. Have a bit of a holiday. Does he? Well, I think it's a great idea, don't you? 
Not right now, it's not. There's things I have to do. Don't you think you should wait? No, I don't think I should wait. The doctor said the sooner the better. Did Tony say anything to you about Essie? Uh, he, he's leaving for Melbourne tomorrow. Oh, good. I'm glad. I get the impression there's problems. Well, it's a strain when you're not together. People drift. Did you ever feel like that? Oh. Listen, dummy. I'll have you know I've been counting the days. to be happy. I want more children, Frank. A great, big, noisy family. Like in the old days. A whole tribe of, of tan and healthy... <laughs> Frank. Frank. I'm so sorry. <gasps> <coughs> Can I speak to Tony? No, he didn't tell me. He'll probably call me when he gets home. Oh, no, no, don't disturb her. No, I'll give her a call later. No, I'm fine. Bye. Now I'd like to welcome back to the stage, Harvey Mawson. Yes, you seem very well. Thank you. Can I uh, get you a cup of coffee or something? Why don't we have one back at my place? Yeah, okay. I'll just get my bag. 
Kisses deep and warm. Coffee? <laughs> no, thanks. You're here upon the pillow. Hey, Tony, man. How you doing? Joe, how are you? Oh, fine. Oh, I'll have a Coke, thanks. On for long? Shall we go? No. Many Night, Joe. Good night. I know that we are not new. Strange. First few weeks in Vietnam were like being on another planet. Now I get the same feeling here. Everything's changed. Tony, nothing has changed. You only think it has. Then maybe I'm the one who's changed. Tony, why didn't you answer my letter? Was it that hard for you to decide if you wanted to see me again? Do you think my decision was any easier? Do you think I wanted to give up the child? Well, then why? I mean, why did you? Because I had no choice. But I would have married you. I mean, you knew I that. I know that. But it still didn't make any difference. Tony! I guess I want you. More than anything, I want you. I'm cured. What of? Men! They're animals. Grasping, demanding animals. Oh, I'm all used up. Had a good time, huh? Oh, I never want to see a man again as long as I live. Well, not for a couple of days, anyway. Oh, and how was Tony? I was okay. Thank you, Marg, for giving me the run of the flat. He didn't stay. What? He stayed for one night, that's all. Why? I don't know. Oh, it ruined everything, Mark. It would have ruined everything if you hadn't. He wanted that baby. He really wanted it. Oh, did he? Essie, don't get so upset. I haven't heard from him. He hasn't phoned. Then forget him. I'll never forget. Why in the hell did you charge that machine gun? You can't just blunder in and hope. Do you realize how big you look through the side of a gun? 
Now you're about to go to war, Lieutenant. So what in the hell do you think you're doing? Playing games? Well, this isn't the Boy Scouts, and you'll need more than the first aid badge if half your platoon's screaming with their guts hanging out. And if you go down, if you go under, you'll take all your men down with you. And God help you if you don't face that responsibility. Bit of Mullins old machine? Yes, sir. How did Captain Lawrence get it? Sort of inherited it, sir. What do you think of the captain these days, sir, Major? He's an effective commander, sir. You didn't always think so. He's certainly putting the fear of God into his men. Well, it isn't always easy, is it, sir? When you've been there. Great to see you. Arthur, How good to you? see you. What's for dinner, Dad? You're right about dinner. You watch out for rabbit holes. Yeah, I'll be right. Don't worry. Where is he? Where's my You're precious? Your precious is so good. Let me have a little bit of 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 why don't you come inside and have a beer first? Get some of the dust out of your The man's ready to go here. I'll be plenty of time for the horses. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I don't want anyone thinking I've come for a holiday. <laughs> I came to work. That's a Steady. Steady. Sure you want to go ahead with this? Where's the saddle? Jeez, you want a bloody saddle now? Thought you were going to ride him bareback. Oh, 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 oh. Don't know what they fed you in that hospital. I'll tell you easy, what, if easy. I could get some of it for the cattle, I'd make a bloody fortune. <laughs> run! You OK, mate? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. OK. What do you reckon? Try it again tomorrow? No, no, no. Now listen, mate. Now! Please. Well, you're gonna be ready for this muster or not? I'll be there. Don't look now, but isn't that our friendly neighborhood warmonger? Tony, where'd you get the motorbike from? It's Peter Mullins. His father insisted I have it. I just called round to Mark's flat. She tells me you're moving. Mark's uncle came back from overseas. It was only temporary anyway. So you're going to live there, huh? Why not? I'm surprised you're interested. I tried to ring. Well, you couldn't have tried very hard. Why don't you come inside? No way. I'm going to go and talk to those kiddies. Are we going to stand here arguing or are you coming? Where? There's somewhere we can talk. The 
So, you're really moving in with that mob, huh? They're not a mob. They're students. And besides, the rent is cheap and it's close to campus. Now, I'm really surprised that you're interested. Oh, you don't think I should have an interest? Tony, I haven't heard from you in weeks. I know. And don't tell me that you tried to call. Now, you walk out on me in the middle of the night and, and then expect me to be waiting when it suits you. I know I've handled things badly. It's just that... Well, I haven't been myself. It's, it's been hard to adjust. I know. You've had a pretty tough time yourself. I do care about that. We'll make it. Won't we? Food. Yeah, well, my karma's all messed up from the red meat I've been eating. Mm. Isn't that what Susie said? Uh-huh. <laughs> They're not such a bad lot, are they? Ah, oh, they're okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. How long have you got? I have to be back for a valley at A600. Can't you get some time off? I'm in the middle of training. For what? <laughs> well, it isn't football. Tony, are you going to stay in the army? Is this a trick question? No, I'm not trying to be funny. What are you going to do? Well, as soon as the battalion completes basic training, I suppose I'll go back. Go back? Mm -hmm. You can't be serious. I've never been more serious in my life. You can't go back. Why not? Have you forgotten what happened to Frank? Look, it's because of what happened to Frank that I'm going back. Look, I'm not like your friends, Essie. I can't sit around here a thousand miles from the place and make great speeches about it all. I'm still under orders. Then resign your commission. For what? To go to university, get a job like normal people do? What's wrong with being normal? Oh, look, if that's normal out there, then I don't want any part of it. And what about me? Don't I have a say in this? Oh, for God's sake, Tony, I need you more than the army does. Or is it you don't want me anymore? Is that why you're going back? Yes, you know why. My best friend had his legs blown out from under him and no one is ever going to tell him it was all for nothing. No one.
By all accounts, you had a very close call. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Spicer says he missed you by inches. Yes, sir. Well, I, uh, I didn't see him coming. Do you normally hurtle through intersections on full throttle? No, sir. I, uh, I'm sorry. It won't happen. Again. It better not. You've been hearing about the place like a lunatic. If only you, I'd sell that bike, Tony. Now. Well, you still can. It won't happen again, sir. All right. Tony, I'm recommending you undergo a series of tests. <laughs> the MI checked me out, sir. It was a thorough medical examination. Uh, it's not medical. It's, um... It's a research project, actually. Research? Yes, um... Defence wants some facts and figures on men who have seen service in Vietnam. <laughs> what sort of facts and figures? I don't know. I've just been asked to come up with a few volunteers, so I'm putting your name down. No objections, have you? As far as I know, it's just a few questions about ops under fire. That sort of thing. You know, defence, they want stats of everything. I suppose it keeps the politicians off their backs. They keep the pollies and the boffins happy, eh? Both know that. Got a little spice to their lives. I suppose it's as close as I get to the real thing, poor bastards. Well, I'll see you on the mess. So, what happens now? What would you like to happen? Would I like to get out of here and back to my men as soon as possible? You still have the best part of an hour to go. Look, I didn't ask to come here. Neither did I. How did you find returning to Australia after 12 months in Indochina? I found it a hell of a lot easier getting a cab. Anything else? What do you want me to say? I was knocked out, I was overjoyed. I want you to say what you feel. How did you feel? Was it something of an anticlimax? No. I was glad to get home. How do you feel about going back? To Vietnam? Hmm. I'm ready for it. Perhaps a little too ready. Do you find... Do you find it difficult to relax? Oh, in situations like this, yes. Why? Well, how the hell should I know? I mean, you're the one with all the answers. Do you feel you have something to hide? No. Do you talk much about your experiences in Vietnam? No. Why not? A fellow officer of yours was badly wounded. Your brother-in-law, I believe. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm not exactly thrilled to the eye teeth about it. Do you feel it's your responsibility to exact some form of retribution? Who from? You tell me. North Vietnamese army units mounted their largest single offensive since the beginning of the war. In the South Vietnamese capital of Saigon, a guerrilla force. Even in Saigon. Four thousand troops barricaded the south side. Viet Cong troops. Why do you watch this stuff all the time? Infiltrated the city's perimeters during the traditional holiday influx from the. You've had your war, Frank. It's over for you. It's not over until it's over. Arvin military headquarters and the presidential palace. Informed sources say that at least 19 guerrillas and seven Americans have been killed in the shootout at the American embassy. 
At around 2.30 in the morning, a suicide squad launched an attack on the embassy gates. Although Marine Haven't you got things to do? Oh, here, like what? Feed the chooks. And what's wrong with that? I am not a bloody woman. Later, at a press conference, General William Westmoreland claimed that the enemy had not succeeded in entering the embassy buildings. Six weeks. What, because of some psychiatrist report? Partly. Partly because... Quite frankly, Tony, you could do with the rest. So could the men. You've been driving them pretty hard, you know. But I don't need a rest. Tony, you've been under a good deal of strain ever since the battalion returned from Vietnam. We all have. Oh. Wait, let me finish. You've also had the added responsibility of preparing new recruits for active duty. And that responsibility has fallen more heavily on your shoulders as 2IC than anyone else in the company. Look, I'm simply suggesting you take a little well-earned R&R before things hot up again. Call it a rest. Call it a holiday, if you like. Good Lord, man, any other officer would jump at the chance to get a break from this place. There's more to life than this. A lot more. Go out in the town. Go and see that girl of yours. See your family. Kick up your heels. Have some fun for a change. Don't worry. It'll be all here when you get back.
first day in the newspaper office. That crazy article you wanted me to print. Can you believe that? All that time. Wanting you. We're going the blasting business, are we? Well, we've got to do something like cattle prices are falling. Home on leave or something? Yeah, more or less. Anyone expecting you? Ah, uh, well, I'd surprise everyone. Tony! Hi, sis. How are you? Tony! It's good to see you! Viv? What are you doing here? Oh, just a bit of R&R. &R. That kind of thing. Six weeks, isn't that wonderful, Dad? Yes, yes, a long time, all right. Yeah. How are you, love? What's the army coming to? Well, they must reckon I'm worth it. Yes, I reckon they must. Never mind the army, Tony. They're in a terrible state here. What with generators on the blink and tractors breaking down. Rod was thinking of taking a run down to Melbourne tomorrow to hunt up some spare parts. If you could do that, it would mean that we could get on with blasting the stumps in the gully paddock. Fine by me. Uh, where's Frank? He's away on one of his walks. Well, there's not really much you can do on the place at the moment. Turned into a regular mystery man as our Frank. Gone for hours at a time without anyone seeing hide nor hair of him. He'll be so glad to see you, Tony, and to know you're staying. Well, he's all right, isn't he? Of course he is. You know Frank. How about yourself? Everything right with you? Yeah, sure. Well, why wouldn't it be? Six weeks leave. In my day, you were lucky to get a weekend. Hey, Tony! Frank, you decrepit old bastard. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Hey, hey, you're not over the wall, are you? Don't be bloody stupid. No, they thought I was due for some bush leaves, so I took it. Well, look at you, huh? All mobile. How's it feel? It feels bloody fantastic. <laughs> Come on, this deserves a beer, Captain. <laughs> I uh, hear you take off and go walk about the drop of a hat. <laughs> You're not uh, duffing the tailor's cattle by any chance? <laughs> no, no, no. Now, timing is very important, Tone. Very, very important. You'll see. You'll find out. <laughs> Is she there, please? Oh, she's doing some sort of radio interview. Who is it? Someone looking for Essie. She and Joe are doing an interview. I already told them that. Do you want to leave a message? Uh, yeah, could you tell her that, um... No, oh, no, it's, uh, it's not important. Bye. As I live and breathe. It's the man himself, <laughs> Captain Lawrence. Slats, how are you? Been the wrong bloody end of town for you, wouldn't it, sir? Oh, no, not at all. I just ordered a beer. Can I get you one? Uh, no, hey, this is mine. Uh, and make that another three pots and a cream de menthe and lemonade, will you? Thanks, pal. Okay. What do you know, eh? 
Hey, you'll never guess who's out the back playing pool with two of the randiest little chicks in Carlton. Mm -hmm. Jules Bloody yeah. Diamond. Sounds like a dangerous combination. Best in the business. He just had a big win on the pony, so we decided to go for a bit of a search and destroy in the enemy territory. Well, why not, huh? <laughs> yeah. Move in on the local peasantry, mobilise any long-haired freaks that offer resistance, then pick up their chicks. <laughs> One of them's even got a car! Oh, <laughs> we need you, mate! Just, uh, Come on! Oh, the floor is set for you, You red chapters, what do you know? Good day, sir. Long time no see, eh? Simon. You're gone! Leave him alone! Gully paddy blasting stumps. Well, that's the gear for the tractor. What about Frank? Off on one of his walks. Tony. Look, it's been a long drive. I didn't get my sleep and I don't want to talk about it, right? Have you been getting lessons from Frank? That's exactly the sort of treatment I've been getting from him. Yeah, we both need a little time to straighten out. Is that why you're here? To straighten out? All right. You need time to straighten out. Fine. I can cope with that. What I can't cope with is all the hostility and resentment that seems to be a part of it. You've hardly said two words to me since you've been here. Before I forget, Dad's planning on taking us all to the club tonight for dinner. Frank's already found some excuse for getting out of going. I suppose you'll do the same. You chaps? Yeah, thanks. <coughs> well, it's cramped here tonight, here. Yeah. When are we going to eat? Oh, God, look who's here. Mona Lawrence? They don't see your name down for the preserves this year. Competition getting a little stiff. Hmm? As a matter of fact, Hilda, I dropped out to concentrate on the sponges. Really? Thought I'd let someone else have a go at the easy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone seemed to be getting in the mood for the festival. Careful, Nan, your claws are showing. Better go and give the old man a hand with the drinks. Looks like he's been bailed up by Archie and Jack. See any familiar faces? Yeah, a few, Nan. It's a shame Frank isn't with us. I doubt would have done him the world of good. Yeah, well, I tried to tell him that, Nan, but he wouldn't be in it. You remember those pills the doctor gave us in the First World War? Tony. To stop us thinking about girls, well, I think my son Tony, I was a kid. You're lucky, I don't need it. Mine was starting to work about two years ago. <laughs> 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 
have you been doing since? No, no. <laughs> Here he is. Tony, you remember Art <laughs> Summers, Jack Cosgrove? Uh, Tony, Tony. Uh, go, uh, just asking after Looks him. like he copped a bit of a service. Uh, I reckon he had an argument with a door at Melbourne. He was uh, going in and someone else was coming out. Mixing with the locals, out. more likely. Back from overseas, eh, Tony? Twelve months in Vietnam well, with the 10th Battalion. Not like Gee. the old 10th, eh, hey, Jack? Yeah. They'd have cleaned up that Viet Cong mob before they knew what it was. Yeah, you can say that again, <laughs> mate. Oh, know, yeah, so yeah, right. Conditions are a bit different to what we had in 43. Too right they are, mate. No, by your leaves, my beg your pardons back then. Why they tell me this mob never breaks out of a bloomin' trot? Moresby in the summer of 43. So flaming hot the birds were dropping off their wires like flies. Never seen You want to learn about jungle fighting, Tommy? You better read up on the battle. Oh, Chopper's bringing in the breakfast then, eh, mate? <laughs> we will warn all the best. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. Oh, man of few words, Arthur. Yes, Frank. What happened to dinner? Changed my mind. I wasn't hungry. You feel like a drink? Yeah, I'm getting one. Oh, no. Not here, mate. It's a bar. Just down the road. And it stays open all night. Come on. Frank. Hey, hey. Do you trust me? <laughs> Look, if you're too lazy to walk, we can take the ute. Uh, right. Come on, soldier. Welcome to the best bar in town. But what in the <laughs> bloody hell are we doing here, Frank? Yeah, you just wait outside for a moment, mate. Come on. Yeah? I'll wake the barman up. <laughs> You're crazy, Frank. Bloody crazy. Frank, what's going on in there? Ridiculous. Patience, patience. Please to enter, Ukta Lori. <laughs> I've never been here at night before. People's always giving me the third degree about where I go, what I'm up to. So, when you lot went off to dinner, it's the perfect opportunity. Now, Squire, we have scotch, brandy, vodka, and beer. Beer's not cold, of course, still working on the fridge. Say you wanted a drink. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Um, scotch. Good choice. I will join you. We'll leave the warm beer for the ponds, eh? think. Where did you... Uh, I mean, how did you... The bits and pieces. Some of it's mine. Some I had shipped over from Saigon by boys in the fourth. It's like a little den, you know. Some place I can go when I want to be alone. Oh, hey. And now? Peace to resistance. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Jimmy Parks recorded three 90 minute tapes. Mate, I just close my eyes and I'm there. No walking sticks, no plastic legs. No, can I help you, Frank? Would you need a hand, Frank? No sad eyes or embarrassed silences, just... Lava in the corneas, old son. <laughs> you reckon they're back from the club yet? Kidding. The sun will be up soon. Oh, hey, listen. Those Friday nights at the RSL can be a real blast. <laughs> we miss out on all the fun. I wouldn't lose too much sleep over it, Frank. Tony, listen, do you, you. You can tell me my own business if you want to, but. Have you split with the army? What are you talking about? Tony, it's me, Frank. Hang on, I've got an idea. What sort of an idea? Tony, ideas can be dangerous, you know. Hey. Uh, I never answered my question. What are you doing? Going for a ride. Do you want to come? What's with the jelly? Show week, Frank. Can't have a show without fireworks. They've had their little blast. Now we're going to have ours. Hey, Tony! Blast. Fine, whatever you think. <laughs> You're off your face, you know that? I thought I had problems. All right! <laughs> My love, there will be songs to sing. Oh, though the snow covers the hope of suffering. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to run away and join the circus. Yep. Do <sighs> <sighs> you ever feel like that, Tone? Tumbling, Vittorios. I can't wait. Hey! Hey, I used to practice. 
this headstands and cartwheels in my backyard. It went slow, it's crazy. Hey, hey, Frank, what are you trying to do? Break your legs? The court is waiting, Captain Lawrence. If you intend to persist with this refusal to cooperate with the court... Uh, Your Honor, I can explain. The whole thing has been a terrible misunderstanding. The man's a traitor! Tell me never tried to ask order. There'll be no interjections. The court is directing its questions to the defendant. After all, Captain, you did claim sole responsibility for destruction of the memorial. I believe you're recently returned from active service in Vietnam. Was the explosion designed as some sort of protest regarding this country's involvement in the war? Your Honor, I'd like permission to address the court. You have something you wish to say on your son's behalf? Y yes, Your Honor. Tony's been under a terrible strain ever since... I he... can speak for myself, Your Worship. I phoned through to his commanding officer at Pakapani this morning. In fact, he should be here any minute. I said I can speak for myself! For God's sake, Tony, tell him why you did it. Tell your family. Tell me. Order. Order. The court will come to order. Captain Lawrence, in view of your continued refusal to defend yourself, I can only conclude that you are experiencing some difficulty in understanding your actions. I therefore propose to adjourn pending a report from a psychiatric authority. You look like you've lost weight. I brought you some books and some cherries. Tony, can we talk? I didn't know what to bring. You weren't very helpful on the phone. Will you be here long? It's not up to me. A lot of people have wanted to put a bomb under that place. I never thought anyone would actually do it. I know why you did it, Tony. You want to end this war as much as I do, isn't that right? You don't have to talk about it now. I just want you to know that I understand. I don't feel like seeing anyone at the moment. Come back later if you like. No. I don't want you to come here. Okay. When you're ready. It's over. I know that's how you feel at the moment. But we both want the same thing. 
We're just fighting in different ways. I'll show you. You'll see. I love you, Tony. You'll see. You'd never notice in this outfit. Well, I'm off to London. You what? Oh, I've had it up to here with strikes and rallies. What makes you think it'd be different over there? Joe. Hello. Where have you been hiding? I've been around. Come on, Mark. The plane leaves in 48 minutes. Joe's taking me to the airport. Oh, Mark, are you really going? I know it hasn't been easy, has he? I know I've been a regular bitch at times, but you hang in there, kid. What else? Give my love to Tony. Those places aren't my cup of tea. I'm always afraid they'll take one look at me and lock me in. 47 and counting. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm gonna miss you, Essie Rogers. You keep the campfires burning, eh? Don't let the bed bugs bite. You have fun. Write to me. Tell me everything that happens. I will. 46. We're not going to make it, Mark. <laughs> OK. Bye. You take care of yourself. You too. I love you, Essie. so you know this isn't purely social. Yes, sir. The Army's granting you an honourable discharge on medical grounds. Now, that's not necessarily as bad as it seems. They're also making moves to have the charges against you dropped. Tony, you've got an excellent service record. There's no reason why you can't get a plum job in Civvy Street. Another two weeks, you'll be away from this place. you leave it all behind you. I'm leaving the Army myself at the end of the year. Gonna join a stockbroking firm. Oil and mineral prices are gonna skyrocket. Poseidon, Hammersley, Western Mining. If you're smart, you'll get in while you can before they take off out of reach. Don't say I didn't warn you. Your big chance is a here at last Now you can go out and get those reds Cause the only good comedy is the one that's dead And you know that peace will only be one When the global order kingdom come And it's one, two, three What are we fighting for? Yeah. 
about. We'll see you soon. Yeah, ciao. Well, how are Joseph and Mama? Fantastic. Wonderful. They send everyone their love. Good. Mama always gets very choked up on the phone. I said we'd probably see him in the new year. Well, are you going to feel up to travelling? Frank, did you hear me? What are you talking about? I never felt better. I thought the heat was affecting your legs. My legs? <laughs> what legs? <laughs> oh, come on, really, Vivian, you think this is hot? Hey, Tony, Tony, you remember that, uh, that rubber plantation south of Long Town? There was heat there, Arthur, by Jove. <laughs> it was like a, a huge wet blanket. You're so thick you could carve it with a knife. Speaking of carving, would anyone like some more turkey? What's happened to the men's appetites? In my day, there was never enough. Oh, yeah, but those were in the good old days, Nan. <laughs> they most certainly were. So what did you think of Frank's little performance? Sis, I don't know. It was all an act for your benefit. It's got me worried sick. The stumps of his legs have started swelling in the heat. He started drinking on the side to ease the pain. And there's all this business with the war. He gets out with the radio, comes home smelling of booze, and raves on about Nixon and Kissinger selling us out to the communists. How can he forget when the news is full of it? You're right in the middle of it, aren't you? It's not always like this. Just a bit tired. Your nurses are a pretty tough bunch. Makes me like to think so, anyway. Ready for the next piece of news? Essie's home, spending Christmas with her parents. Oh. Tony, she's always asking after you. I don't know what the situation is with you two. And I don't want to pry, but I'll just say one thing. You've got a better chance than most. Thank you, Mrs. Rogers. Uh, my grandmother asked to bring this over for you. Ah, oh, that'll be her special chutney. Don't go away. I've got something for her, too. Oh, uh, you'd, you'd better come in. You want to speak to Essie? She arrived home yesterday. Yes? You two have a chat while I go and wrap Mrs. Lawrence's present. Lord, isn't it hot? There's a storm brewing, that's for sure. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. I had to uh, bring a present over for your mother. Oh. Bit of a heat wave, all right? Yes, isn't it? How's your family? Oh, fine. Various stages of collapse after Christmas dinner, but they'll survive. So, how long are you home for? Oh, I don't know. A couple of weeks. There we are. 
Oh, be careful with the wrapping, Tony. I ran out of sticky. I had to paste it on. It's a bit like me at the moment, coming apart at the seams. Oh, be sure to give my best wishes to the family. I'll do that. Uh, Essie will show you out, won't you, dear? You'll be sure you, you get home before the rain. Bye. Doesn't look like rain to me. Well, no, Mum's usually right. Look, uh, since you'll be here a while, uh, why don't we... Well, I was thinking of taking in a movie to break the monotony. Mum's still a bit hyped up about the explosion and everything. Perhaps I should meet you there. Quick wish to be building around the countryside, old son. Don't you call it the righteous? Oh, yes. Like that, is it? Like what? <laughs> Don't worry, old son. Your secret's safe with me. Didn't see anything. Didn't hear anything. <laughs> Frank, have you got a minute? There's uh, something I want to discuss with you. About Essie? No, it's not about Essie, mate. It's, uh... Oh, dear. Dear, dear, dear. We've been talking to Vivian, haven't we? She's worried about you, mate. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's worried about poor old Frank. So what else is new? Listen, I know what's eating you, but you've got to forget the war. Forget it. When we've turned the corner, mate, we've had him on the run since Ted. Frank, Look, did... do, do you think that Nixon is going to walk away from this? Look, I've just been listening to him on the radio. This, this pulling troops out is a ploy, mate. Now, you watch. If this whole thing is not wrapped up soon, he will bomb them into oblivion. Huh? It's about bloody time, I say. <laughs> come on, come on, have a beer. Quiet and peaceful, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's just that I'm nearly out of fuel. Oh, Tony, that line's so old, it's got whiskers on it. We used to come here when we were at school. Well, there you go. It's got luck going for it. Do you think that we can just skip over everything that's happened over the last three years? It's worth a try. Tony, we have to talk. Okay. What do you want to talk about? You start. Why does it always have to be me? You're better with words. Tony, talk. <sighs> talk. All right, let me see. What do we talk about? Well, some talk of Alexander, some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander. Such great names as these, but of all the world's great heroes, there's none that can compare to the toe row 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 of the British crown, I did. Oh, God. <laughs> I learned that in primary school. Oh, you used to come here when you were in <laughs> primary school? Now, doesn't that mean more than words, huh?
stupid bastard. What's up with you? Yeah, those cows are carving. Yeah, well, I told you to leave your bull in this pen, didn't I? Are you crazy or something? Yep, you even got a certificate to prove it. This might be a bit of a game to you, but this is my farm, Tony. You're only a visitor. We'll see about that, big brother. Hello. Hi. Oh, keep the bloody farm. <laughs> and two of the best. <laughs> I love you. Tony, I have to go to Melbourne sooner than expected. When? I'm catching the bus in an hour. I'm not even packed. Tony, it's something I have to do. It won't be for long, I promise. Of course. I love you. When all this is over... Well, you better get a move on. You'll miss your bus. I don't suppose you want to see me off. Got a lot of work to do around the farm. How long will you be? I don't know, a couple of weeks, maybe. All right. Perhaps you could come to Melbourne. I have to go. Thank you all for coming here today. This is one of a number of meetings we're holding. If we're going to consolidate our forces into one single unit onto one particular day, then it is essential that the police and public officials aren't worried about violence in the street. No, 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 no. And the first thing we can do towards this is to avoid violent clashes of any kind in the months ahead. This is going to be the largest political demonstration this country's ever seen. We're not asking you to stop campaigning, but merely to use your discretion. We simply can't afford to have the press against us. Exactly. Coordination will be everything. Now, we'll keep you informed as to what we're doing, and we ask you to do the same. Together, we won't be telling the public what they should be thinking. We'll be taking the public with us, and they'll be telling us. Yes. 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 That's right. Yes. Yes. Tens of thousands of marchers brought capital cities to a standstill today as people throughout Australia took part in the largest political demonstration in the country's history. More than 70,000 marched in Melbourne with 25,000 in Sydney to give a combined total across the nation of more than 120,000 people. In Melbourne, the chairman of the moratorium committee, Dr Jim Cairns, told the people that their stand against the war in Vietnam could no longer be ignored. The marchers came from all walks of life. Workers, students, church groups, housewives, school children and pensioners. The number clearly exceeding even the organizers' expectations. As Dr. Cairns and his fellow organizers moved up Burke Street, a man yelled abuse from the watching crowd. When a marcher became angry, he was spontaneously surrounded by a group of young people who urged him to ignore the interjection. Remember, they said, we are here for peace. As the marchers sat down in Burke Street, stretching from one end to the other, Dr. Cairns once again addressed them. Nobody need feel worried or fearful about the will of the people, he said. The will of the people is being... Tony. I'm worried. It's nearly midnight and Frank's not back yet. Do you know where he is? Yeah, I might, um, I'll take the unit. Well, I'm coming with you. No, it'll only be a couple of minutes. No, please. Hey, it's okay. It'll be okay. Oh, 
Time to go home. <laughs> oh God, by whose mercy the souls of the faithful find rest, vouchsafe to bless this grave and appoint it, and release the soul of Francis Joseph Vittorio, whose body is buried here, from every bond of sin, that he may always rejoice with thee and thy saints forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth, world without end. Amen. He gave everything he had us. There was nothing left. What did he do that was so terribly wrong? Tell me. I wish I had an answer for you. But I don't. Another time, he would have been welcomed as a hero. In his family's eyes, he was a hero. That's the important thing. Is that what you think? What I think doesn't matter. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong. It matters to me. But you marched arm in arm alongside people that called him a butcher, a baby burner. I marched for peace. I marched for an end to the war that killed Frank, not what other people thought. Isn't that why you blew up the monument, to try and put an end to it? Essie, you, you wouldn't understand. Where are you going? I don't know, and I don't care. As far away from here as possible. Oh. It wasn't meant to be this.
what I 